We are back with another episode of q and I am Jason Avon. I have my man, Quentin Michael. Q&A, not just a pun or not just a name, <laughs> but for you guys to ask us questions on social media, also on Inside the Birds platform um, directly, make sure that you're asking questions because we want to talk about what you want to talk about and hear. So, Q, what's going on, my man? How you feeling today? Man, I'm, I'm feeling great, man. Um, had a had a great, great weekend with the family. Um, enjoying my time right now. Got a big day tomorrow. So, uh, or actually, big day today, I guess, technically. But, yeah, man, I'm excited. Excited for uh, seeing what's going to happen with this free agency period. No, oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. And I want to say, you know, thank you to everyone that is making our show a hit. Um, all the fans that are tuning in. Um, we're getting the numbers back and it's been um, um, well received. And we just want to say thank you um, for everyone that's tuning in. We're trying our best to give you that fresh fire, um, great insight, um, good looks and all that stuff. All right. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. So, man. so we're going to we're going to jump right in. Oh, we want to thank, the, thank Adam Kaplan and check out our show um, It's going to air every Wednesday at 6 a.m. Um, inside the Burge platform, um, YouTube. Um, Twitter, Instagram, we're going to be on all those platforms, but make sure that's inside the Burge platform, YouTube, especially. Um, and, and we're looking forward to another great turnout this week. Um, we're going to jump right into a queue. Um, this is free agency. Everyone's going crazy. I got the live tracker going right now <laughs> next to me. I'm, I'm trying to see what's going on. I, I want to know where um, Malik Hooker is going. I know the Eagle fans like, man, can we get Malik Hooker? <laughs> um, you know, I, normally I hate Ohio State guys. I hate them. I got my Michigan on just for that purpose and reason. <laughs> but that kid can play. I don't care what school he went to. And I hope, hopefully we can get them. And that kind of leads me into it, right? Because we got like um, the DBs. We talked about the receivers last week. Now we need to talk about the, the DBs. And who else is better than talking about DBs with a DB that's going through free agency like yourself? You had like one of the crazier experiences because we had a lockout. You didn't have time to ch talk with a bunch of people. And before you know it, you didn't sign with the Rams on a multi-year contract, guaranteed money, and you didn't even speak to anybody. Tell me about that story and how, what kind of sense did that make? And just let us know about that. It was crazy. Yeah, man. You know, that was that was probably one of the craziest times because I'd never been through a free agency um, in my life. And so um, remember back then, this is 2011, um, we had the lockout. So all off season, I mean, we're we're not allowed in buildings. Um, we weren't allowed to, you know, really talk to any coaches. Um, Sean McDermott had just been let go. Um, it was just a whole bunch of different turmoil and different things going on in not just in my life, but in the building, in the NFL world, um, the business world, like everything was just kind of like uncertain. So um, that experience was very, very weird. And <clears throat> I say that because like you said, like you mentioned before, as soon as the, the CBA was agreed upon, it was like, boom, Bam. free agency hit. And it was like, people were just signing left and right. So like for me, I had no idea. Cause like times like right now in a normal free agency year, you kind of, you kind of get to, um, get a feel out for like who's interested in you before the signing day as we're seeing now like you know there's agreements to sign and, and this this and that mm -hmm. well before the actual deadline to or the deadline to open free agency so in my experience I had no idea who was even interested right and so um you know it just it opens up and it's just it's just crazy so me and my wife are just sitting at the house all day just like trying to figure out like who's interested where I'm gonna go and uh, I remember, you know, my agent, um, Jason Shea from uh, Sports Stars, uh, he, he called me. He's like, hey, just, just sit tight. You know, don't, don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> just, just, like draft day all yeah, over. Yeah, man. It's you crazy. You that experience, but you got that experience <laughs> through that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, and it felt really good to, to feel like one. I didn't have a ton of teams. I remember the uh, Rams were one team that was interested. And um, the Browns were really interested. And <laughs> back then I was like, and I. Sheldon was there so he was I had some familiarity with, with Sheldon Brown being there but I'm like I don't know if I want to go to the Browns you know and uh so anyway so long story short my uh my agent he gave me a call and he, he was like he was angry about something he wouldn't tell me what it was but he was angry about something and then I just remember him saying all right we'll see how they do this and then he hung up and then like I want to say 
an hour later, he called me and uh, he's like, hey, we got you a deal. Four years, 28 million um, with the Rams. Money. And I was like, so I was like, yeah. Like I was <laughs> dancing around the house because, you know, the way we come up, you know, from the from the bottom, it's, it's tough to really to make it very far. And, you know, that was a moment in my life where I felt like finally all the hard work had, had paid off. Finally, I was and it was necess- it wasn't necessarily the money it was more of the feeling of being appreciated. Like, OK, wow, they think yeah. that I can come in and help. Like that was what made more to me than than the money was just feeling like I was appreciated. Not saying I didn't feel like it when I was with the Eagles, but like it's a different type of feeling when another team that that covets you you know what I mean so yeah that's kind of how how that experience went for me it was it was fun man that's 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 a great story like and and I and you root for you know Quinn uh, Michael just because you're a great person um you've always been one of the hardest working guys so when you see a guy like yourself get that contract everyone is just happy on the inside it's like man finally a good guy gets it rather than a dude that's just like supremely gifted and talented <laughs> and doesn't really care about it and is going to treat it like crap you know what I mean but you know when you have it when you have the opportunity to get a guy that's that's been on special teams been denied Sean Considine gets put in front of you like there's so <laughs> many different things and, and no and no and Sean's a good, a good guy but I'm just saying that you know there's so yeah. many things that goes and that goes into it and we see yourself get a contract it was great now let's 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 get into it a little bit further right is there a place that your wife wants to go over <laughs> where you want to go? Is there a place, uh, something like where your parents or somebody close to you is like, Hey man, stay away from this team. Get an opportunity. <laughs> How would that work? You know, that's, that's weird. I didn't really have, I didn't really have those conversations with, with her because I mean, my wife's a Jersey girl. So like anywhere we were going to go, she was going, she was going to have a trouble leaving. Like she, yeah, we were in St. Louis and she was having trouble, you know, ended up in Carolina. <laughs> she was having trouble, not trouble in the sense of like she didn't yeah. want to be there. She's just a Jersey girl. Like, she, she just wanted, wanted to be wanted to here, be you know, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, but yeah, I didn't really have much conversation. Like, again, this this went by so fast, like I didn't even get a chance to really like process it. I mean, we're talking days before training camp. So I didn't even really get a chance to really process it before I had to start packing everything up. You know, my wife was looking for houses in the St. Louis area. Um, I'm trying to get some stuff packed up, get my truck packed up and get ready to get down there for training camp because it was it was go time. And um, I think that's the only thing, not that I'm, I'm, I'm upset or anything like that, but that's the only thing that that um, I didn't I didn't get the experience with the free agency is like, you know, going to visit different teams or, you know, talking to different teams and multiple teams and trying to figure out like, Hey, you know, how, how will you use me? Or like, you know, what position do you see me playing? Like those kind of things. But the good thing is coach Spags was there, coach Spagnola. So I yeah. was, I was familiar with the system and he's familiar with me. So I kind of had an idea of what was expected of me. Yeah, you wanted to, the whole recruiting experience. You wanted the big houses. <laughs> you wanted the cheerleaders. You wanted the whole thing. <laughs> Just keep it honest. Keep hey, it honest man. For the people. Listen, I, I was working a long time to try to get to that point. You're but like, listen, I ain't mad them. about it. I, I'll take it. Shoot. All the amenities of this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, now you experienced it and you were in the same defensive backfield with a hall of fame player and Brian Dawkins, right? At any point of, of time, did you reach out to Dawkins and say, Hey, I'm going through this situation. Um, um, what do I expect? Because we know that Dawkins was um, let go um, by the Eagles and will let walk, you know, by the Eagles and the, and the Broncos picked him up. So um, did you ever reach out to him at all or talk to him in that process? Honestly, <clears throat> honestly, no. Um, Again, again, the whole the whole thing was such it was so different in the sense of having that that lockout. I think if 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 we didn't have the lockout, if if it was a normal situation, I would have had an opportunity to really talk and really, um, you know, get a feel for, you know, what I should be asking, the kind of questions I should be asking, um, you know, and and when it came to the when it came to the free agency thing, um, after seeing how things went with Doc, um, and how things kind of shook up the way, you know, he was allowed to walk, as you said, it, it kind of soured me on um, the entire process in general, just seeing um, 
I, cause in a, in a way I kind of felt the same thing happen. Now, obviously not even close to the same level as, as dog, but I remember I had a, a meeting with, um, with, um, coach Reed and this was my last year. And during that year, I was very distracted because as you know, in the contract year, yeah. you're not sure where you're going to be, you know, you're, you're thinking about it. So it's constantly in the back of your head. And I remember I was, I, we had a meeting, um, a players meeting with coach, um, usually had like the leaders on the team mm -hmm. <clears throat> after the meeting, I, I stuck behind and I was like, Hey coach, you know, and at this point it had been such a distraction. I felt that I wasn't giving the team everything that I should have been given. And so I said, coach, I just want you to know this. I said, um, I just want you to know, like this whole contract thing has been a distraction to me, but I'm tired. I'm tired of thinking about it. I want to get over it. And I just want you to know, like, I'm putting it behind me. Um, I'm not even thinking about it no more. I'm just going to go out there and play, play my heart out. And he looked at me and he said, he's like, listen, I, he's like, I, I can respect that. He said, I know, I don't know. He's like, I know you're going to get paid. I know you're going to get a, a nice contract. I know you're going to get a nice deal, but I don't know if it's going to be here. And like, to me as a player, that's all I needed to hear because that in my mind is like, okay. That's awesome by coach right there. Right? Like, he's being honest with me. He's telling me straight up. I'm talking yeah. to him straight up. There's no no line, no no behind yeah. the back, like nothing. Like, listen, if you we can try to do it here, but if we can't, I'm sure someone's gonna take care of you. Right. And that that just took it took everything off my chest, and I was able to just play free. See, now that's the now that's the insight that I want I want to hear because now when you're dealing with free agency, there is the there is the the side of it that people are not honest. And they'll draw the process out rather than being like concise. Hey, we're going to keep you. We're not going to keep you. That's all a player wants to hear. And <laughs> we don't want to know, oh, you a great guy. And we're trying to work out a contract. And because it kind of leaves you in limbo. You're playing double dutch. You're going back and forth. You don't know where you're going to be. And I can respect Coach Reed coming out because that goes against code for him. And that's the thing, that's a nuance that, that you may miss. That goes against code for most coaches because in other words, he's saying, listen, I'm privy to the meetings. I know that I shouldn't be telling you this, but the chance that we keep you is very low, basically. Or yeah. we're not done here. I've heard them, heard the contracts. I, we, we've talked about it and I'm gonna let you in on, in on a little bit. But for a coach to do that, and we talk, and like we talked about a few um, uh, last week, like Ozzie Newsom, like when you when you hear stories about Ozzie Newsom, that's how he did it. He said, "Hey, listen, go and test the market. This is what we can pay you. We can't pay you above this. If you can get it, ball out. We want the best for you. We can come back. We can ten day contract, one day contract. We retire your jersey. But if you can't, we we got the door wide open for you." Yeah. That's honest. And that's what the players need to hear during this time. But most of the time, it's a bunch of, you know, I like you, but you know, this or that. That's what I heard during my time. And we'll get there and we'll get there in, in, in a second. But um, I want to just expound upon it. What was it like buying that first thing after the contract? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the first thing I bought, uh, I still have it to this day sitting right over there. It's a, <laughs> a massage chair. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. I went to a company, Relax the Back, and they have um, <clears throat> these these nice, it was like a Japanese company. I can't, the name escapes me right now. Um, um, that was the first thing I bought though. It was a massage chair. Like, it was like $7,000 massage chair. I still use that thing, man. It's 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 amazing. Um, so that was it. And then obviously um, we went and we bought a house in, in, in St. Charles. And that's really kind of, it for the first part for the first part of it so nice big money I <laughs> that type of <laughs> oh man oh that's so, that's fun stuff that's fun stuff. Stuff. i was blessed man I, I really i was i was really blessed and, and fortunate and you know in this league man a lot of it is a lot of luck and it's a lot of hard work but some things sometimes things gotta fall in the right place and you know this it, was a situation for me it's crazy you know i, I think about dbs and i think about I remember when you guys left um, and my my college teammate, he we had him here, but my college teammate, the best feet I've ever seen on it on a DB, just period, when it came to the ladder drills and redirection and stuff is a guy named Marlon Jackson. You remember Marlon? Oh Jackson. yeah, yeah. He was here. Marlon, um, sweet feet, can great mover. 
um, got the pick that sealed um, the AFC Championship against the Bra- um, against the the Brady's. That's what I should call them because they ain't nothing <laughs> without them. The Brady's. <laughs> Right, that's that's for real. messed up though. <laughs> but yeah, the New England Brady's, right? So when you got the pick against New England Brady's, um, you know they won a Super Bowl, beat the Bears, and that year he was scheduled the the following year he was scheduled to, to be to get paid, and he ended up getting a, a knee surgery, right? So they couldn't pay him. He did all of this stuff right leading up to the contract. And in that off season, he gets a, 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 a surgery, a, you know, an ACL surgery. No, it was Achilles. It was Achilles surgery. Oh, yeah. And um, and contract going out. It, yeah. And you'd imagine. And then the guy that came in with him that was drafted a little bit lower than him, um, that got a pick in the Super Bowl, ended up with the contract. Mm. And Kelvin Hayden. Like, it's, you just, like, you never know how it shakes out. And you need that type of you know, fortunate times and anything when it comes to winning the game, when it comes to life, you know, there's sometimes we may have caught ourselves in a questionable situation where we could have been on sports center, then and then and then doing the wrong thing, but it didn't get out or whatever happened in order for us to continue on our path. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of, um, you know, I won't call it chance, God's mercy, um, you know, I don't know, fate, whatever it may be that um, allows us to go on that path. Yeah, no doubt, man. No yeah. Doubt. So let's talk about let's talk about you and your free agency, man. Like, well, first, first, I want to kind of expand on what we kind of talked about last week. We kind of um, went on. Um, we we're talking about your your time with Chip, and I I, I want to know a little bit more about that wow. entire experience, but particularly <laughs> why you, he had you doing DB drills and playing nickel. <laughs> like, what was going on with that? Can you, you explain that? <laughs> All right, so. So, you know what, uh, Chip came from the Northeast, right? So New Hampshire. So he idolized Bill Belichick. He idolized, you know, everything that the Patriots did. So he he tried to adopt the Patriot what way of Troy Brown and mm-hmm. those guys that, that played receiver sometimes that would go to nickel back so you can make, make everyone seem like you're this great coach or what have you. And I remember going over to nickel back and um, I was getting routed up. But I, I I was getting routed. Like <laughs> it's a routed. different world over there. It's a different world. I, I, I covered like I covered a few people in one on one, and I was hype. Like you know, I grabbed the hill a little bit. You know what I mean, and I was hype. And I got on regular drills. Boy, I gave up about three touchdowns. <laughs> all of about five plays. <laughs> That's right? so funny. So um, so but I'm like, and, and so the whole time, like this is like off season, off season training, right? Or OT or camp. No, no, yeah, it's off-season training. And um, and the offense would be on the opposite field because we did in phases. The offense would be on its own field and the defense would be on this field for the first couple of phases, right? And I would go over defense and I'm like, why am I going to defense? Like, I, I'm not fast enough to be a DB, first of all. Um, and I can probably blitz or something like that, but I'm not covering anybody. This doesn't make, doesn't make sense to me. So... Um, I knew when Chip Kelly was the, named the head coach, I actually called Jeremy Macklin and told him, man, it's been, it's been, it's been one, it's been good. Like, yeah. you know, um, thank you for everything, you know, whatever. Cause I knew I just didn't fit his style because his style was small guys that catch and run after the catch. And I'm like an insurance policy as a player. That's my mentality. I'm an, I'm an insurance policy as a player. So you don't, you don't necessarily think you need me until your house is on fire. <laughs> right but yeah. when everything is going well and all electrics up and everything is running fine you're like ah we can do it out him he's fine but as soon as the t- the, the the tires get flat the engine doesn't work or if you got flood insurance the tornado comes that's who i am i'm there i'm like i'm the jake from state farm <laughs> you <laughs> like know that, i like I, that I'm, that's how that's how i was as a player i was fourth down i was third down when guys had a bunch of drops or it was windy or it was wet it was rainy it was a critical situation that's when coach reed and that's what he told me he was like listen a lot of people don't see the value in what you do and sometimes it can be frustrating because I may not call on you until the fourth quarter and you not you, you may not have a target. So keep your mind in the game. 
And that was the role that I had. And I knew it because I was limited as a player. I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I realized that one point early, I had the most leverage when I was, when I was young, when I was in my fourth and fifth year, I had the most leverage and I had a lot of teams clamoring and kept, could get after me um, to, to, to recruit me to their team. But I was so loyal to the team. And that's what we, that's, and that's the part cue that I like to expand on what you talked about is that when you see Brian Dawkins get cut and Brian Westbrook get cut and Donovan McNabb and so on and so forth, this team rah-rah person that you have been accustomed to your entire life, guys like you and I, we've always been sold and sold out for the team. When you see that, you begin to realize like, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, one plus one is not equaling two because these are quote unquote team guys. They're not being rewarded at this point. So this is not, everything about the team so let's stop using these cliches and all of these catchy terms to make people buy in when it's your best interest as the organization um and and then i begin to realize that guys like um you know lavernius coles um darrell revis guys that um, would not play unless they got their bread um or you know khalil mack or the rookies that hold out they get torn apart but they're actually doing the most, um, uh, I, I, what, what, I, what would I say? I think they're doing the best thing for themselves. And I think that they're doing the right Shift thing. Forward. Because yeah. if it was on the opposite end, the team will cut you at, boom. Yeah. So you got that opportunity, make them, make them pay you. But yeah, exactly. ahead, go yeah no, like, like, like I look at the Dak Prescott situation. Um, yeah. You know, me and my buddies, we, we talk about all the time. And like, he wants four years, what? Like, there's no way. And, you know, sure enough, you saw when he got hurt, the team just tanked, you know, and and he ended up getting this four year contract, 160 million. So now what that does is going in the going into the future, future quarterbacks are saying, like, listen, you know, I don't necessarily have to do five, six year deal to get that type of money. I can do a four year deal and then get that type of money, play it out, ball out, get another four year deal. So, you know, I, I totally agree with you guys like like Revis and and guys that stood their ground actually pushed push the, the players in general across the board, push their, their, um, their worth further, um, yeah. further along than, you know, guys like, like the, rah, rah, the guys like the us, team guys. Just yeah. Kinda, it's like, yeah. yeah, the team guys get kind of taken advantage of in that, in that situation. Right. Because you're a team guy. Like I remember everybody getting workout bonuses in their mm -hmm. contract. The Eagles would not throw a workout bonus in my contract because Jason's going to work out like, why would we just give oh, you yeah. money? But but you know they would they would not throw a workout bonus in my first free agency contract. Mm -hmm. So it was you know it's the nature of the beast because sometimes like being too um, team oriented in this league will deny you from getting your money. That's just, yeah. <laughs> it, it just will. It's like oh he's a team guy. Don't worry about it. But the yeah. guy that goes screaming and kicking, that guy gets paid. It's the same way in the workforce. You can have a person that never says anything and does their job over and over again, and they'll constantly get passed up. And the person that does half of it, but is a buddy of another another person that's in in a, in in uh and you know management and or a person that's willing to to walk out and and leave the the the, the team. They get the money. It's just like that. I don't know what it is, and it's not right. But um, but that's my that was part of my experience. Okay. But I but I hated every moment. I and to to the, to this point, let it, let's let it be known. I hated every minute under Chip Kelly. <laughs> I had I, I thought it was a gadget system. I thought it was scrawny in its approach to the NFL. I thought it was um, um borderline um disrespectful and it was humiliating we were doing a three-man weave for warm-ups i thought wow. I, I would go to the bathroom on purpose doing the drill wow. <laughs> before like like, like like basketball, basketball three-man weave I, I you know when when I, you can, i can't take you serious if you think me warming up in football in pads and throwing a football in a th th to my teammate and passing saying oh it's helping you get familiar with the foot what <laughs> God. Like I had uh, no respect for that. And I had, I had no respect for him dumbing down the NFL system um, to, to two words and everyone knows the plays after about two games. Mm -hmm. um, I had no respect for it. Um, so with all the disdain that I have in me, I hated every moment of it. <laughs> so that's just true. I hear you. And, <laughs> and listen, I've, I've heard some stories about, you know, some crazy stuff that went on and, 
And from outside looking in, just looking at the scheme schematically, it's it's not at this level, at the NFL level, it's not going to last long. I mean, you got maybe one season of running them same routes and everybody's going to study you and catch up. And I feel like that's what happened. Yeah. The third game, they're calling out. Up, yeah. He's going over. Up, he's staying down. <laughs> up. I was like, oh, my goodness. And then he would get mad at you for saucing it up. I'm like, coach, if I'm going to run the same route five times in a row, <laughs> why would I keep running the same route and, and make it look the same? Why shouldn't I, like, add something to it? It needs something. It needs some salt. It needs some pepper. Yeah. It's, it's bland right now. Like, what are we talking about? a little about? hot sauce on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So then, so you kind of, at this point, you kind of know the writing's on the wall and, and uh, you know, things are going to not end well here. So, yeah. Um, so can, can you walk me through what happened? I mean, the Eagles released you. Um, Mr. Laurie had some very great things to say about you, how we did. And even Chip did, you know. But um, yeah. how yeah, did Chip, that, Chip used with... to release them stories before you got <laughs> cut, right? <laughs> that was the thing. But Chip, Chip, Chip would really? release a story on you. Like every, before every every notable guy that was there for a long time, he would release, release a story on you. I was like, man. I've never been in a tabloids of the Eagles, right? <laughs> of the Eagles community, but how did this happen? <laughs> He's like he had a pre- he had a press writer uh, right? Man, yeah, he had. It was his homie from Norfolk, from from New Hampshire. Hey, 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 Johnny, <laughs> write this story <laughs> and give oh, us some man. justification so the fans won't hate me. <laughs> uh, he was getting rid of everybody, man. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. So the funny thing about that is, so so to break it down, I, I knew that my writing was on the wall and, and that I would only be there so long just because um, I had it. I had it out with my I've never had it out with a coach. Um, I'm usually yes, sir. No, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and 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 especially if I respect what you're saying and I know that it works like like I'm a person that I know what works and what doesn't work when it comes to receiver play. I'm like, oh, that's that's a great point. I could have used this move in this situation, or um, if I would have kept my hand up, it would have gave me an extra, you know, tenth of a second, you know, to 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 you know, caught up to that ball to ball or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, my receiver coach, um, Big Nail, at the time was an offensive line coach, turned tight end coach, turned receiver coach, and it was and it happened too quick. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, he would tell us, you know, receive, release is not, you just swat and chop. That's it. You just run at it and you just swat and chop. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that makes no sense, sir. <laughs> like, what are you saying? Like swat and chop. So our receivers were getting jammed up and they're like, dude, why aren't you getting jammed up? I'm like, I'm not listening to that dumb stuff that he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> swat and chop if you want to. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if you, if you don't make it, swat, if I swat and chop and I don't make your make you move or take a step at all, you're still in front of me. So I can yeah. swipe your hands down and you're just going to reposition your hands and, I'm getting, and we're in the same spot. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to tell me more than that. <laughs> so that was the thing. And um, so I knew I would be leaving because every every time um, he would say swat and chop, the whole receiver room would do look do, would look at me like this. <laughs> I told him after after about the seventh game, I was like, man, y'all just got me fired, man. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm talking about the whole, because I said like in the front over over to the left, like if you're facing the floor door and like Deshaun, Macklin, Raleigh, whoever it was, Demar- Demarius, they would look down every time. When he would say something, they would look at me. The whole room did like this every single time. I was like, man, stop. And he'd be looking at me. See, the reason, the reason, you know, these guys don't believe because Jason, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you should you should have said, coach, just turn the tape on. That's, that's why they don't believe. <laughs> just that, that's it. That people getting jammed. So anyhow, I knew, I knew that my writing was on the wall and um I knew that I was gonna get released, but I knew that at that point, um, that it was bad because as as the from my first year all the way until my seventh year, my numbers went like that as far as catches. It always went up, right? From 11 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, then 60 for, you know, three years or so. And it was it was going higher. And when Chip Kelly came, they made a concerted effort to isolate me and put me on routes that would not give me the ball. That was their thing. And they did it. They did a, they did a good job at it. It was after a Dallas game where I had – 
Nick was, was just having a bad game. That game, that particular game was windy. He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. And most of his targets with me, I was wide open, but he just was throwing it over, over everyone's head. It was everybody. It wasn't just me. And um, after that game, I didn't get a target, <laughs> you know, for the rest of the year. So I, not, not, I, that's not true. I, I got targets, but it wasn't frequent at all. Um, and it was usually like a flat route or something like that where I wasn't intended to get the ball. Um, so I knew I was going. So Carolina, um, I did not want to go to Carolina. I wanted to go to Kansas City the entire time because Co- Coach Reed was in Kansas City, and I, and I knew that I would thrive in his system. Um, John Dorsey, the general manager, hated me. <laughs> Really? He did not like me. He's like, oh, he's too slow to play. He's this and he's that. And Coach Reed was like, listen, he's an insurance policy. I'm telling you, <laughs> the guy gets open. He's like, I own film. He's he, people like, you know, I'm like, he's like, listen, he's in a different system and he never gets covered. This is Coach Reed. But Coach Reed at this time, did he wasn't operating like Coach Reed was in Philadelphia. Right, because right. Coach Reed was the general manager toward the end of my career more than he was the head coach. Right. And I don't know why that reason was. I know Coach Reed loved Tom Hecker. When Tom Hecker was gone, Coach Reed stepped up and had more of the general manager role in Philadelphia. And Kansas City, Coach Reed is Tommy Bahama shirts. He's <laughs> coaching. He's not can worry about the players at all. He's giving it completely over to the general manager. So he's like, dude, I hired this guy to be general manager. Jason, I want you. I'm not going to going to cause I'm not going to jeopardize my relationship with them over this. He's like, listen, um, go, go where they're going to give you the money. You're going to p- put some more stuff on film at some point in the season. We probably going to get you anyway. So I ended up going to Carolina, Carolina offered me a little bitty signing bonus. It was a couple hundred grand. I think it was like 400 grand or something like that. And I said, a little bitty, forgive me for most <laughs> of America or most of America's like, what? Well, you know, during <laughs> that time good. guys was yeah. getting, you know, you know, yeah. eight, nine million. So, but, um, <laughs> but I was older at this point. I already had my second contract with the Eagles. Um, and so this was my third contract. Okay, good. And, um, real, and I real get real down quick, there. What, what year was this? This was uh, 2014, maybe. Okay, all right, cool. 2014. And, um, and I'm gonna get off this stuff because I feel like I've been talking forever. But mm-hmm. um, I get down there um, and I, I, the, the offense coordinator, I'm like, where, so where am I playing? Um, I, I kept asking him before I got there. I'm, he's like, ah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I was like, this sounds a little shaky, a little iffy. So I get down there. I'm a slot guy. You know, I'm a slot guy. I'm not an outside X. They try to put me at the X queue, right? So <laughs> trying to put me at like the fast guy position running post. I'm like, that's not what I do. I'm a slot. Like this is, you put me in here. Nobody going to be able to cover me. It's like, ah, we don't want you in the slot. Jericho Cotri caught 13 touchdowns last year in the slot. I'm like, okay. All right. Put him there. Put me outside. I do well. A um, couple games go by, we're losing a bit, and um, and the offense coordinator, I got asked a question. You know, we lost the game because we weren't we weren't aggressive at, at all in the last couple minutes of the game, and they asked. I said, well, we just weren't we weren't con- we were too conservative, and we didn't um, do what it take took to win the game, and that's all I said. And I got uh, the guy came and cut me, and I went to the, <laughs> the Wait, guy that... came and cut me, and I went to the Eagles, the um, the Chiefs the next day. <laughs> this was what after a meeting? No, this was after this was like I said that in a press conference. It basically said I said I threw the offensive coordinator underneath the bus. Wow. Um, and and the next day they cut me. I was like, man, if I knew I can say something <laughs> in order to get cut. I would have said something week one because I hated every minute of that too. <laughs> Dang, we, that's crazy. You, because you, you were in Carolina, that you got to walk two blocks to practice, the film breakdown every yeah. two every day. You know. Like, <laughs> so I actually, besides playing for the Eagles, that was I had a great experience in Carolina. It was my last year, yeah. and it could be because we had Ron Rivera. He was a defensive minded head coach, defensive and mind, so yeah. you know, coming from offensive systems, you know, the Eagles where you guys get babied and you get everything yeah. you want <laughs> going to the defensive system. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. Um, yeah. You know, see me, I love the city of Charlotte. I love yeah. the city of Charlotte. Now, as far as like, you know, like Kim and all, I like, nah, not, no, nah, not for me. 
I was Ooh. like, nah, like like Kim and the offense and uh, what they were running. I was like, nah, I'm yeah. they just wasn't it just wasn't in my in my wheelhouse as a player. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you so I must you must have came there the year after I was I was there. All right. I was so there in 2014 ish, I think. Yeah, my 15, last 15. season, my last season was 2013, year before we uh we lost to the Niners in the um in the playoffs. That's that's crazy that that you uh you were there. I remember yeah. it now that it's coming back to me. I remember you being there. Yeah, but, I was there. I was there for a brief like and I and I was in Kansas City for my last year and a half. So yeah. I was like, man, that was that, that was that was a good time. Kansas City was was a good time. Nice, nice. Yep. So now you re, you reunited in uh, Kansas City with Coach Cully. Um and this kind of goes back to kind of a little bit about um, Chip, but also I just I'm just curious. What, how do you think that Coach Cully is going to do as a head coach down in the Tex in uh, Houston? Um, I hope he does really well. Cully is a people person, right? So um, if there's anybody that can smooth over the Deshaun Watson deal because they're not, you know, making a move to 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 move Deshaun Watson, if there's anybody that can smooth that situation over, it's Coach Cully, and you know that he's a person that can bring together a team. That's he has that personality type. Um, and I just I just wonder if Cully's gonna go on like his tangents when it comes to telling stories and stuff like that. I get that from Cully, right? Telling these long stories. <laughs> so I just wonder how that's gonna be. Um, I wanna see him in that position and I pray that he does really well. I know that he can do well. Um, I don't necessarily know how successful um, he'll be because you got a disgruntled quarterback. You got an ownership that nobody wants to go and play for. Um, you don't have the best receiver situation. You don't have the best DB situation. Besides Deshaun what, what, um, Watson, what's the Texans good at? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Like, nobody knows what the Texans are good at besides Deshaun Watson. He's the entire team right now. You got rid of J.J. Watt. Like, where are you going? So that it, it's not the coach all the time. You can have, you could be a great coach. Look at Pete Carroll, you know, his first stint with the Patriots, you know, yeah. didn't do well. Or, yeah. or Bill Belichick with the Browns didn't do well. Like you need players to do well. Yeah. And I just think that he's in an uphill battle because he doesn't have players. Um, but I, I'm hoping that he can do well. He has the the, the qualities to do well. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. I'm hoping so too, man. I'm hoping that he does well. Yeah. So. We Let's transition, um, Q. Let's transition. And um, I, you know what? I want to talk about, I want to talk about um, free agency. I want to talk about free agency. Um, I want to talk about the guys that the Eagles have let go or the guy that they let go, right? So you got your boy, the green goblin with the green hair. Man, listen, if you have the swag to, and <laughs> I'll tell you this, you know what? It's not a player that I probably enjoy more than Jalen Mills as a coach and as watching him. The fans are like, what? <laughs> Because you can't manufacture that type of confidence um, in a normal situation ever. The guy can get beat. You can, he, the, the receiver can drop the ball in the end zone. He going to get up like he made the play. I think the D, every DB need to watch his tape and try to pick up his swag. Um, and if you can wear green hair from nine to five, <laughs> 365 or 24 7 365 man like that's the confidence you need in your team so I think the Patriots yeah. actually won in this but you you can expound upon it yeah you know I agree with you 100% um talent um confidence is a talent especially at the corner position and it takes a lot of cojones to to line up on the line of scrimmage after you know you, you got beat and to come back and do it again and <clears throat> that's one of the biggest things that he brings to the table. He was, um, when I was working with the Eagles, he was part of my rookie class, Jalen oh, Mills. Nice. Yeah. He, and I just, I, I always had, I always had love for him just because of that confidence. He was always smiling, always positive. Mm -hmm. um, always, you know, had always worked. He worked really hard. Like he always worked hard. He was a guy that he, I think he was aware of his shortcomings and he is aware of his shortcomings. And he's able to overcome that. And to me, that's the kind of player you want. So I'm actually, I'm happy for him because it looks like he got a really nice deal in yeah, New England. Yeah, he got nine million guaranteed, <laughs> four years, 24 million, six yeah. million a year. Now, the, the guaranteed money is what you end up getting. 
Yeah, <laughs> they catch exactly. you. Exactly. I, I, I learned that. <laughs> I learned that in uh, in St. Louis too. <laughs> that them numbers they sound good, but uh, yeah, you rarely get to all of that. Seven but. years, two hundred and ten <laughs> million, a guaranteed ten million. It's like, oh, they got it. <laughs> two years later. But, two years uh, later. <laughs> I'm on the streets, but no, um, but no, he, uh, so yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, man. He's, he's a guy at, so I, I watched a little bit of the tape from last year of him and, you know, he moved into the, the safety position. Mm-hmm. He also played outside a lot. And I think he's very unique in the sense that he's able to play outside. Like a lot of guys can play outside, but can't play inside and vice versa. A lot of guys can play inside, but can't really make it outside talking about nickelbacks and, and mm-hmm. cornerbacks. And he's able to do both really well. Um, I do think at at safety he was somewhat limited just because of his experience. Um, his experience. There's a it's yeah. There's a whole bunch of different things you have to train your eyes to see when you're playing in a box. And I I would be interested to see where New England uses him. I I personally think his best position is at corner, um, like a cover two, um, cover you know three four type of corner or inside at a slot. Um, now like Belichick's nickel. yeah nickel nickel corner and Belichick's really good at finding out what you're able to do well and using it to the best of you know that the best way that it helped the team so I'd be interested to see um, you know he actually I was expecting going on the watch the tape last year I was expecting um, you know just because the overall play of the secondary wasn't wasn't great was great mm-hmm. I was expecting him to have a worse season and he actually had a really good season and, uh, you know, he, he, when he was, when he was struggling, it was really when he was at safety inside. And those are things, like I said, you have to learn those things, those nuances of the game inside. Yeah. Cause it's a lot different. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of guards. It's a lot of, you know, that's the thing that I saw when, when I was watching Jalen, I just felt like he wasn't prepared for the angles, the entry points that the safety, the safeties have to do. Like tackling that corner, you have the sideline, the guys coming towards you. They're designing their offense in order to get to get you isolated, right, at, from corner because they think the cornerbacks are not going to tackle. So you have an easier tackle from corner. That vertical tackle, that north and south tackle on a running back and an entry and and like you can miss that so fast. I seen a guy take it to the house. What was that Jamal? What was the guy from um from Green Bay? Like if you enter if you enter wrong the wrong way, it, it, you're just gonna give it up. It's just it's just mm-hmm. how it is, and I don't think that everyone can see it. Um, and it takes some time. I don't think they won that he was the, the greatest at it, but I thought that he made progress throughout the season. When the first couple of games, I was like, oh my goodness, what did we do? And then as the year went on, I, oh, he, he, he's getting better at it, you know, and, um, and, and to have a guy that you can, you know, p- plug a hole on the outside when you need to mm-hmm. is even more valuable. And that's the thing about Jalen Mills. He's valuable because he can play multiple positions. And it's hard to get rid of guys like Jalen Mills because he's going to give your team confidence. Most of the time, he's going to be in the right position. If he gets beat, it's usually it's going to be because of his athleticism. Once he knows what he's doing. And safety this year, he had some wrong entry points and, and he gave up a few big plays. But that's just because he, of the inexperience. He knew, where, he knew what he had to do. He didn't know how to get it executed, right? Yeah. So... And, and most of the time, Jalen Mills, what hurts him is just his athleticism. Like he's not a four, four corner, a four, three corner. So it's hard for you to match up with a guy that's like Tyreek Hill or another guy. But if you got a big body and you just a jump ball receiver type, he's yeah. going to be really well versus you. Because yeah. if he ends on you and especially let you run a four or five or something that receiver, he'll, he'll be in your hip pocket the entire game and he'll be confident throughout the entire game. It's just when you get a faster guy, that gets his hand down, and yeah. it's been one. Then if he got if he got to run over thirty yards, if he got to run over thirty yards, it's it's over. <laughs> and that's the same. I mean, honestly, though, that's the same for a lot of cornerbacks in the league. Like I think a lot of people might think that, you know, um, to to play corner, you're just an absolute blazer. Mm-hmm. Very few cornerbacks, I would say, very few cornerbacks that are blazing, like have blazing speed, really last very long. Like. You have to have you have to have speed, good enough speed, or good enough technique, or you know, good enough scheme. And if all three of those things, if one of those is missing, 
you're going to struggle. Like you look yeah. at Justin Barrett, guy that now when he first came into the league, you know, he was like a four two guy. Yeah. And he struggled. I believe he was in um, San Diego. Yes. And he, he struggled. Mm -hmm. And now he's been in, in San Francisco and you're like, OK, maybe maybe he's not as bad as you thought. Like so a lot of it has to do with scheme. A lot of it has to do with coaching. And I think that when you have a guy like like <clears throat> like Jalen Mills, like you're saying, like he can do all these different things. I just it just sucks to see him go and you know go to yeah to a different team when we we could have used them next year but you yeah know. we we have a bunch of issues in the secondary um this year and we're going to talk about those now so Jalen Mills is departed for New England um Patriots and so Rodney's coming off of an injury yep. um you got Kayvon Wallace you got Marcus Epps um, you got Nicole Roby Coleman, you got D Slay, and you got a, but in the middle of the field with Roby Coleman, Kayvon Wallace, Rodney McLeod, Marcus Epps. Do you think we're good enough to win? Um, it depends. So I think I depend. Let's 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 put this there, Q. I'm gonna help you out. This position of safety is is extra hard. The reason it's extra hard because the Eagles never go out and get a quality. When I say that, we have quality players, but a stud linebacker. So we have more plays that get to the safety that it seems than any other team. So talk about like it from that point of view, because it seems like we don't have the guys that thump and that can get in there and um, that chase the ball down. It seems like the ball gets, gets to our safeties a bunch. Yeah, absolutely. And if I go back, so I watched a couple games um, over the last, actually I've been watching quite a few games and I noticed one common theme and I don't know if it's because of, I, I think it's a mixture between the scheme that we ran and uh, our linebackers being undisciplined, but we had a lot of teams that were running like, like little bunch sets and doing a lot of misdirection. Mm -hmm. And what that, to me, what that says is, Number one, they think that we're, they know that we're playing man a lot, single high or man cover three, same mm -hmm. type of deal. And they know that our linebackers and our, and or our safeties have undisciplined eyes. So a lot of misdirection, a lot of boots, and then you're going to get guys just crisscrossing all over the place. And to add to that, every now and then you're going to hand off off one of those, one of those boot looks or one of those um, pull looks. Now mm -hmm. you got a big gap and you yeah, got you got a running back running 20 yards, 30 yards on a safety untouched. <clears throat> so I agree. I think our, our secondary can, I, our, let's re reverse real quick. Our, our front four is pretty good. Like they're legit and bringing Brandon Graham back is huge. I think our secondary will be okay if our, if our linebackers play a little bit better or if we bring in someone, like you said, that's a, that's a thumper that's going to, you know, get everybody on the same page, make sure everyone knows where they're supposed to be and then fill the gaps where they're supposed to fill. Yeah. Then the secondary doesn't necessarily feel like they have to, you know, look into the backfield and, and be ready to stop a run play that's 10, 20 yards down the field. Cause that's what really happens when you see all of these over routes and all these guys coming open wide open down the field, it's because the cornerbacks are feeling that pressure. The line, the safeties are feeling that pressure and they're feeling like they need to come up, come up too soon. Yeah. Right. If our front seven is, is stuffing that run, it's it's easy in the back seven. I mean, in the back four. So I think you're absolutely right. If we can get our, our front seven, <clears throat> really our linebackers to kind of step up, I think that'll help everyone across the board. Now you think now, and, and I agree with that. Do you think that the system will be different now with the new defensive coordinator? Because that wide nine that he's known for with Schwartz and, and um, rushing – the uh, stopping the run on the way to pass it. That's like the famous thing that, that, that comes from that Tennessee and Washburn and, um, yeah. and, and Fox and uh, you know, no, is it Fox? What was that? Fisher, Jeff Fisher, like yeah, their, Jeff Fisher. Their, 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 their thought process when it comes to that, he comes from that. Um, Schwartz did. Do you think with the new defensive coordinator, they'll, they'll be a lot different. Yeah, you know it's it's a uh, it's a, that's a good question. I I feel so. I played in I played with the Rams. I played under um, Jeff Fisher, so I'm familiar with that defense. Um, it really was a Greg Williams um, defense. And, yeah. Um, it was 
as a DB, when, when it's ran right, it's a lot of fun. Um, but again, Greg Williams, I think, did a lot more blitzing than, than Coach Schwartz did. I think Coach Schwartz is known for more letting the more or less letting the front four do their job and get after it. Get yeah, after it, yeah. Um, now, um, Gannon, Jonathan Gannon. Um, I, here's an odd thing I found out today. So I was looking him up a little bit. This is kind of weird. Um, in 2011, he was a scout out for the Rams. So he was when I when I signed with the Rams, he was a scout for some reason with the Rams. He was there for two years. He, he so. was like, man, we gotta get this Michael guy from Philadelphia. He's I'm telling you, he's undervalued. You probably, you probably even know who I was. <laughs> but no, that was pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't notice that. But so just kind of looking at I think his system is very similar to um it's funny he he um coached underneath Mike Zimmer. So Zimmer's system is very similar to Jim Johnson's defense. But watching tape of the Colts last year, it seemed like, and, and he wasn't the D.C., um, but it seemed more like the, the um, Pete Carroll cover three type of defense. So yeah, it, it'll be interesting keep to them, see. Keep, them, keep everything in front. Stay on top. Yes. Um, you can give up the underneath. We'll get a couple batted down here and there. They may get three, four yards, and then we'll play man on third, on third down. That's, that's it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> but so now that being said, the thing that's encouraging to me, because I was watching the secondary today, and I was watching um, the Colts play the the Packers, and they don't they don't have any marquee names other than like Xavier Rhodes, and I think he might have been injured this game, and then and uh, Hooker or yeah Malik Hooker, Hooker. Yeah. Hooker. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was injured as well, so they didn't really have any marquee names in the secondary, and they were playing disciplined football. They were yeah. where they were supposed to be on every coverage. They were minimizing big plays. They had a couple, sure, but. Um, I was encouraged by seeing how well they were coached. Now, I'm not sure how much Gannon will be involved with the actual secondary. I don't know how that's going to work because he, he's the defensive coordinator now. He's not the secondary coach, so he might yeah. have to relegate some of that stuff. But just judging off the secondary play of the Colts, I'm encouraged that they're going to be well coached, they're going to be in position, and they're going to minimize the big plays, which are the, exactly what the Eagles need to do a better job of. Yeah, that's it. Get, if you can stop the big play, and for goodness, for for goodness sake, if we can stop giving up fourth and fifteen, oh third God. and fifteen with the with the, with the sticks defense, man, I want to like listen. I be want to throw rocks at it. <laughs> I'm like, man, if you get up there and at least play cover two, right? At least do something that's going to disrupt somebody. Don't just let people run. You cannot let receivers run untouched in the National Football League. That's a disaster waiting to happen because it's like a team that wants to reroute guys, but they bad at rerouting. You get to the yeah. safety too fast. And once yeah. you get to the safety too fast, it's over with. Yeah. It's just the nature of the thing. And, 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 well, and the thing left, to me. Throw back right and first down. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it, what I saw when every time, and, and you, you notice as a receiver, every time I'm, I'm like, okay, so we're playing a sticks defense, but nobody sits on the sticks. Like if if it's third and let's say it's third and ten, <laughs> I'm lining up at ten yards. They're they're really not. They're supposed to be sitting set at the sticks. You want to yes. make them. You want to sit and make them go behind you. Actually, if you have a safety over top, yeah. and so you know as a as a quarterback, if you're if I'm at ten yards and I think I know you have to get to ten yards, and the first thing I do as a DB is backpedal three yards. That's that's game over. You're gonna win that's that every time. That's it. You want them to run past you. You look and peek where they are, see where the quarterback is, and get underneath the route. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it's not that hard, but for some way, we, it, was, it was hard in that situation. Yeah. All right, Q, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back. Um, um, and this break is spot, um, brought to you by, like, Clearview High School, where my man Coach <laughs> Q, the defensive coordinator. The pioneers. The pioneers. Yeah. Clearview Pioneers, they were at launch this weekend, launch trampoline park there for New Jersey. I'm looking yes, forward to a Q. I got to come to a game, man. You got to have me out there. Come um, on, man. got to come to a game, talk to the team or something, man. I'm volunteering my services. There you just got to charge $1,500 every second, <laughs> but I'm not going to charge you this time. <laughs> <laughs> you come out there, what's your fee? $1,500 a second. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably with that getting paid right now, right? Right, it'd be something like that, fifteen hundred dollars a second. <laughs> and we are back from our break. Um, there's still a lot of exciting topics to go after. Q, let's think about 
a few things in free agency. Let's talk about a few things in free agency, right? One common theme that's happening in free agency is that former Eagles players and coaches are being successful. And it's kind of bizarre because when you hear the storyline from the fans, you're like, oh man, Nils Nagelar is terrible. He can't catch anything. Could he not play at all? Or was it the Pat person that was throwing it? Mm. I, don't, I don't know. I'm just don't shoot me when you see me. Don't smack <laughs> me. No, I, I'm just saying. Hey, I mean, Jones has got a new contract. Was it just the player or was it the coaching? I don't know, but you talk about that, Q. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a that's a tough one because, you know, especially with, with Nelson, um, you know, talk about a guy that had a tumultuous career here. Um, you know, his, his, his rookie year, okay, second year, very, very up and down. His entire career, very, very up and down um, mm-hmm. when he was here. I mean, obviously he had the off the field issues, but I think his biggest his biggest downfall, and this can happen in this city, especially, you know, if if you're not used to it and you don't have that thick skin built up, you can start to listen to too much outside stuff. And then what happens is it becomes a distraction and becomes something that hinders you instead of something that motivates you. Yeah. And so I, I kind of feel like that's a little bit what happened with him when he was here. Um I'm happy to see him. He went down to uh he went down to Oakland or Oakland, you know, showing yeah. my age. No, he went down to uh, Las Vegas. Man, it's still Oakland. It's ever <laughs> forever going to be Oakland. Nobody care about Las Vegas and the Vegas. Right? It's Oakland. They from Oakland. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> well, yeah. So, you know, just, just seeing him go down there and he had a good seat. And I was proud of him, man. You know, because I, I always saw the talent and um, I worked closely with him when I was when I was in the building and, um, you know, tried to help him, you know, kind of overcome those hurdles and, and he was going through a lot. A lot of people don't know. He was going through a lot of different things and uh, stuff I won't talk about here. But, um, you know, he had, he had a lot of personal things going on. And so I'm glad to see him overcome those and, um, you know, bounce back. Bounce but back. that does seem to be the case with quite a, quite a few guys. Right? You, know what? you know what's so funny is that Nelson, I've said this over and over again. Nelson, when he was here, was the best route runner that we mm-hmm. had. Yes. yes. And he doesn't have great hands. Everyone knows this. Doesn't have great hands at all. He drops some passes. He has a lot of off-target throws as well. Yeah. He does. And a guy that doesn't have great hands and a guy that's not throwing accurate passes, they don't marry well. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, I had a teammate in college. His name was Steve Breston. I love Steve Breston. One of the like most electric players in Michigan's history. Um, Steve Breston was in a doghouse our last three years at Michigan. And because he would put the ball on the ground, drop punts every now and again, and he would drop a boatload of passes in practice. And the coaches would berate him, beat him down. His confidence was low. And Chad Henney threw a hard ball, and he couldn't catch up to it. This guy goes to Arizona, get drafted like in the fifth round, ends up having like two or three thousand yard seasons because he's with a quarterback that's accurate Mm. and can't throw the ball hard at all. And so Steve Breston looked like, oh, my goodness, you like Steve Breston. They got three thousand yard receivers on one team with Anquan Bolin, Steve Breston and Larry Fitzgerald. And you're like, man, this dude is putting in work out here. And it was all about who you playing with. And you go down the line, Reggie Brown here got paid because Donovan McNabb got hurt. That's just true. (laughs) He got paid because Donovan got hurt. When Donovan was playing, they were like, man, Reggie Brown can't catch. He was in a doghouse. Jeff Garcia gets in the quarterback and Reggie Brown started to look like T.O. It's like, what happened? It all depends on who's behind the helm, who's under center throwing the ball. If you got an accurate, like when you throw hard, you don't have room for error. So you got to be accurate. You have to be like Josh Allen. Josh Allen Allen will throw the ball through you, but he's accurate. (laughs) So 
if you throw you throw hard, it's okay. Just be accurate. You can't be accurate, inaccurate, and throw the ball hard. Those two don't don't work. And it's gonna it's gonna isolate you and the receivers that you can have on your team. And guys like me will stay around for ten years because I can catch the inaccurate hard thrower. <laughs> that's yeah. just how it is. Wow, <laughs> I never thought about it like that, man. That's that's a good breakdown. And you know that's uh, that's something else. That's something. <laughs> But so, so let me, give me, who are some quarterbacks that you would put in this category as maybe not necessarily um, throw it through you or, you know, throw too hard, but also accurate. So like a little bit of both, like, give me one that you see and you, he's throwing it way too hard. Uh, Just based off of Cam, Cam, Cam. throws the ball too hard. And, yeah. and and it's some guys that have always been taught um, taught to throw the ball with like throw it don't you know throw it hard like okay it's about getting it there it's mm-hmm. about being catchable like Russell Wilson can throw the ball hard but Russell Wilson has learned over the years to throw touch and here's the best example of this cue. One of the better examples, Rowdy White was halfway out of the league when Michael Vick was his quarterback because he could not catch a left hand ball that was pretty accurate, but he was just throwing it too hard, could not catch it. But he is an all pro when Matt Ryan was at quarterback because he threw a different ball Mm -hmm. with less pace on it. Wow. That's just like those little things, because when you're when you're like I said, when you're when you when you come out of a break and a guy's throwing Nolan Ryan gas, <laughs> you just don't have room for error. You got to be efficient with your footsteps. You got to be efficient with your head turn. It can't be low. It has to be straight. And you you can you got to be perfect. You can't be one of those guys that run and put their hair down and chop it. You can't do that because now your head has to do this. You got to be like this. From here, everything got to be perfect in order for you to, to, to catch from that guy that's um, throwing the ball that hard. But you got a pillow thrower like Kurt Warner, <laughs> Drew Brees. Um, just think about it. Um, yeah. Dan Marino, uh, guys like that, that that throw nice balls, tight spirals. They can put a little gas on it, but know how to throw the ball. Man, those receivers, they get yards of the catch. And that's what Jerry Rice benefited from. Now, Jerry Rice was the person, but Joe Montana wasn't the blazer Steve Young wasn't a blazer they were accurate and when you're accurate the receivers yards at the catch go from one yard after the catch the three or four after the catch which turns you into a 100 yard receiver rather than a 70 yard receiver just different wow. that's true wow yeah I like that I like that <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah go, go ahead go ahead, go ahead. You got it. yeah so so you're getting all of these guys so now check this out Q you got coaches Spagnola, Super Bowl, you get Coach Reed, Super Bowl, you get Ty Bowles, Super Bowl, Coach McDermott. He was here in that time. All of these guys are coming from the Eagles. You get um, players that are leaving, that are having success. Is it the coaching or what's going on? Is it the players? It it has to be something because there's uh, too many people that are leaving successful. And Doug Peterson is going to be right along in there. He's probably going to sit out this season. But next year, Coach Peterson can win another Super Bowl and do something else. You'd be like, man, is it the people that we're picking or is it, are the organizations just overlooking these things? And those are the questions that you have to ask. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's tough, man. Um, I think, first of all, what we have, to, we have to realize is a lot of these coaches, when they are in Philly, they are still successful. They were successful here. And so... Yeah. You know, you can't tell me that when Andy left or Ron Revere left or Spagnola left or Sean left that they weren't going to be successful. Um, Player wise, I'm a little more um, surprised by a few of the guys because there were a few guys that left that when they were here, they just looked like they they couldn't play at this level. So um, coaching wise, I'm not as surprised. It's crazy how much talent though has has left. I mean, you can go even back to Chucky. Um, uh, I'll call him. I'm blanking yeah, his name right Gruden. now. Gruden. Yeah. I mean, he was coaching here. Um, yeah, Rivera you know, was coaching here. Like they go. It's a lot of good Shermer, coaches. Sherm, like Chili. it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. Like, and so you know, it feels almost like you know, 
Phillies is kind of a mecca for coaching. And I, and I think a lot of that has to do with Andy being kind of the cornerstone of this area for so long. Um, he was here for a long time. He was able to implement his system. He was able to put roots down in the system. He was able to bring in and cultivate and train coaches and, and, and show people that this is the way you do it. Um, even little stuff, little, little small things. Like you remember, he said at every one of our meetings, right? The training camp, one of the main ways to get kicked off of this team was what? What well, uh, to, to steal, was it a stealing? To steal, right? <laughs> steal. If it, and he, it was the same thing every, every year, but like when you hear that over and over, it just, it kind of locks in your head. And then like, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, that's how you build culture. And so um, I, I think one on the one hand, you I got, tell my staff that now. <laughs> one way to get kicked out of here is stealing. <laughs> See? <laughs> tell my kids that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's real. That's where to live by, man. And yeah. so, you, you know, we're seeing that we're seeing that that the system was in place for a long time. And then now it's kind of the first time where we don't know what this what the <sighs> system's going to be like. Right. Like, how long is it going to be in place? And really, since since Andy left, you know, we had the chip experiment. Right. And then we we had Doug and we were thinking that we're getting back to that, that Andy tree. But, you know, that was, he, and, and that was the thing this offseason. It was like. They were trying to get away from the Andy tree. I'm like, get away from it. You see all these people with success. Like, why would you get away from it? Like, we need to be right. running toward it. Like, like where's the enemy? Like, yeah. where's Zeus? Like, like, what's going on here? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm blind. Well, you know, and I think, I think, I think Howie, I think he wants to to kind of put his stamp on it. Um, you know, I, I personally, I'm not sure, but I feel like a little bit of. Um, of his um I don't know how much he was involved with the chip hire I I feel like he was pretty involved with with Doug coming over mm -hmm. and so maybe it's a like a scorn situation where he's just trying to get away from the Andy tree or I, I'm not quite sure but uh -huh. I agree with you like why would you go opposite route when you've had such success for so many years for so many years yeah it, it, it's certain things are bizarre and um, we'll get the answer because they'll come out. Doug did an interview the other day and um, first time he was live doing an interview. So it was, it was some it was some things that were said that were alluded to. But, you know, Doug is going to be a stand up guy and and, and yeah. you know, he's trying to get a job next year. So he doesn't want to, um, you know, hurt his chances and say anything. Uh, so me, it's, it's uh, I, I, no, I'm, not, I'm not going to even say that. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I'll tell you what I could. No, no, it's, uh, I was thinking about something uh, I'm not okay. going to say, it. but, yeah. but, but, but the storyline. So, and here it is like, and, and what, what you said is kind of funny because I remember, um, the, uh, there being documentaries of the Cowboys in their glory years when they won in 94 was 90, no, the, the, the nines were 94, but like 93, um, and you know, Jim Johnson was there and then you had Jerry Jones who was like managing the team. And they got into it. How you yeah. win Super Bowls and you get into it, right? Because somebody wanted the credit or the glory. And you just hope that that's not the case with Doug and, and Howie and the organization. You know what I mean? Because they, they, they had a good thing going. And um, it was this season great? No, the season was horrible. But it wasn't enough to warn a fire this early. Um, so to, to, to see how the team responds um, and see where the team is going um, is going to be very, very interesting. And I, and I can't wait to see it. I'm going to be rooting for him no matter what. Um, I just won't know people that are on the sideline, but it'd be, but it'd be great to see. Yeah, and, and so here's, and here's my question, okay? So we have salary cap issues all across the board. Um, I think we just we, got under today, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did. So we're good, we're, we're good the whole good. thing that happened, good one. Um, God one, sorry. We're God one, good one, someone. <laughs> so, but still, it's not a great, it's not in a great situation, right? Get the, no, the no. salary cap issue. We got holes all over the team. Um, we've got, you know, first year coaches that might be great, may not be. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that's, that's going to kind of be, um, time will tell on that. So yeah. does, if this is a, if this is a fill, does how he said, does he survive this? Yes. Right? If this, you think so? Yes. If it's a failure, if it's a complete, complete failure, right? We look back three years down the road and it just didn't work out. You think how he survives this? Yes. 
Wow. How is not going anywhere? How is how is <laughs> how is the how is if, if if we were if we were um if we were playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, um you know how we would have like seventy two lifelines like three. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, but it's it's good he's a good dude like yeah. and, you know and he's done a lot that's just how that's how it is he's a good person you know what i mean so um it's just tough man because like he, won, he just won a super bowl three years and that's the thing like yeah. hold on so, so so let's let's back it up we can say anything that we want to say the man just won a super bowl a couple years ago four years whatever sure. it's been fair enough, fair only, enough so 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 he has the he has a longer rope than and, and, and doug and, and, and to to be honest, let's 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 hold it, let's hold it on. Let's, let's hold it on. <laughs> let's be fair. Mm-hmm. Let's let's be fair. The free agency of the Super Bowl team is what won the Super Bowl. Fair and enough. Now the draft picks, Brandon Graham, you know, Barnett made a player too. Lane. Lane, Zach, Kelsey, mm-hmm. but Alshon, um, you know, LeGarrette, uh, you know, the, the offensive line, Brooks and um, JP, all of those guys came over in free agency. So you can technically say, okay, maybe the draft picks weren't hitting the way that they normally have, but the free agents won. So I get both ways, you know, so we'll see how it I goes. Feel, I feel you. I feel you. I totally, I'm, listen, man. What do you think is going on? What, what do you think? You I'm think root- three years. Three years. I'm asking, I'm, asking, I'm not letting you get off. What? Three years. And <laughs> For if, me? If, if, it, if it's not going well, do you think he survived? I, I don't, I don't know. It depends. So if we have to see, we have to look at what do we mean by well, right? If, there's still no talent on the team and nobody seems to be developing, then I think it's a situation where you got to start over, right? Yeah. You got to start from scratch again. So, but my, my only issue is, um, Jeffrey Lurie has a very, he's very familiar with, with Howie. And I think that that's a good thing. And that's also can be a crutch at times because what if there's a situation where there's someone else that could do a better job? Like, yeah. are you really turning over every stone? Right? Are they too? Um, are they too familiar? Are they too? Are, are they too close for each other for 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 him to see properly? Go ahead. Yes. Like, can <clears throat> obviously nobody's gonna tell Mr. Lori to do with his team, right? So if he wants yeah. to do something, he gets it, right? But having someone that has 72 lifelines. Is that the best thing for your organization moving forward? So like, I think after winning the Super Bowl, yes, he gets he gets credit for that, right? I do think I disagree with the Doug firing only from the sense of not anything that happened on the field, but just the, all of the, the hoops that had to get jumped through to even get practices and have a season because of COVID and all that stuff. Like, I think just this whole COVID season kind of warranted maybe another do over for next season, but said that fine. Totally fine. I get it. Like he's got to go, you know, Doug had to get fired. I understand that fine. Now moving forward, like this is you, right? Yeah. Howie, this is, this is you, right? This situation, we won the Super Bowl. Now we're in this situation where we need to get back to winning. We got to get back to being successful again. We had a rough year. We had the whole thing that happened with Carson Let's see what you can do to build this team now. And so I'm I'm a more inclined that if in three years we don't see enough progress, I think that he's probably gonna be gone. I don't know. No? I don't know. Did you I don't know. Mr. Well, Lurie said said that it was never even on the table. What's that? The, how well, he being fired. Yeah, like, not, I'm was, not saying this year. Like, no, I'm no, saying three. I'm just saying though, this year, like how can the two bow winning coach be on the table? And not that that's just how like so yeah. what that lets me know is that is that there's a special connection there. There's a father son connection there. Mm-hmm. And um, it's going to be that's that's going to be always be hard to be broken. And I hope that for the good of the organization, because I say my comments not out of spite, not out of demeaning anyone. 
but I'm an Eagles fan. Mm -hmm. And I wanted for the good of the organization, the right person, because times change. All right. This game evolves. Um, plays are new. Defenses are new. And they're trendy. And you have to stay above the curve. And you can tell, and we talked about this last week, the team that's chasing the latest great thing, they don't have a clue. <laughs> They don't. You're right. They're you're just right. trying to emulate. They're not. They don't know who they are. They don't know where the future is going. They're 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 concerned. They're trying to, um, you know, you know, copy the 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 Xerox machine when everything is going wireless. And you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just not like you don't need that anymore. It's like no, we don't need copy machines anymore. We don't need them. It doesn't matter anymore. It's it's new. We have the internet. We have email now. It's 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 over. You yeah. know, so and, and and you have those, you have those, um, you have those organizations. I, I don't want us to be one of them. I want us to be on a cutting edge. If yeah. you were in, I, I want to be the organization that was, um, you know, investing in Amazon in 1994, <laughs> not necessarily in 2021. Like yeah. we want that organization. <laughs> That's what we want. So um, we'll see. Um, how it shakes out. We got a few more topics we're gonna get out of here because we, we're doing the best we ever have, right? We are the we we almost <laughs> um, right at an hour. <laughs> doing good. We, we doing we good. We ain't doing too bad. We we doing about but right. an hour and twenty. Right. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, some, yeah, it's somewhere yeah. in there. All right, all right, all right. So there's some free agents. We're going we're gonna to hurry up and expect it. There's some free agents still out there, Q. Um, from the defensive backs, we have, um, just top of my head, we got William Jackson that's still out. We got Patrick Peterson that's still out there. We have Troy Hill that was just released today. We have um, Malik Hooker that's still out there. We have uh, Xavier Rose that's still out there. Of mm -hmm. these guys, who do you think that will fit out? Well, we don't know what our system is going to be. They'll fit our city better. I, I can tell you what I what I would like to see. Um, personally, um, Malik Hooker is is a person that I would love to see in the Eagles uniform. Now, can we afford him? I'd love to say, yeah, maybe we can get him on a one year prove it deal. Um, he's coming off injury, but he's twenty four years old. Um, phenomenal player coming out, tremendous speed, athleticism. And he can bring a swagger back to this secondary, right? And he can also help, um, you know, depending on how Rob McLeod <clears throat> comes back, how far along he is in his his um, his rehab. We got two safeties that can step in and that are athletic, that are aggressive, that will play the game with discipline. So I'm hoping we can get Malik um, signed up here. Um, my next, and I'm gonna just do the, my top two because I know we're running out of town, running out of time. Um, I like Xavier Rose, and I say that because his size, he's, he's what, 6'3", mm -hmm. um, 210, 220, um, still got a lot of speed. He used to be a 4'3", four, 4'4", you know, four, four, four guy, um, probably slowed down a little bit. He's about 30 years old, but I just, I like his, his size. I like his aggression. I like his experience, and I like his playmaking ability. Um, he's not, I wouldn't say like a ball hawk like Patrick Peterson, but um, he, he fits the mold pretty well, so I like to see those two guys, and of course, Jonathan Gannon has been familiar with him. He's coached him the last couple of years. And, um, you know, I, I think they can add a lot. So add to him, yeah. So I, I love the guys that you have. Um, Xavier Rose, to me, um, is the he's limited. Um, yes. A lot of people thought that he was like this pure lockdown because he was going against bigger targets. Right. And for the fans that are trying to get deeper insight, like a guy like Jalen Ramsey is so special because he has the deck sterity, the movement, everything that you need in order to match up against all people. So he can match up with Tyree Kill. And that's very, very uncommon for a guy that's six, two and a half, and that's over 200 pounds to move laterally and be able to run across the field with a guy like that and to be able to, to match up with Julio Jones at the same time. You just, you either have one or the other, you never have it in one person. Yeah. And um, so it's very, very uncommon to have those guys. And those guys are the Deion Sanders, the Rod yes. Woodsons, the Charles Woodson, like when in his prime, those guys can do those things. It's very rare that you can get guys to do that, um, to do all of those things. So, so, um, so, you know, give him his roses while he's here. And for Xavier Rhodes, he's great versus bigger targets. He cannot cover smaller targets. Right. You move him left to right, 
you give him a head fake, his hips are tight. That's what that's what they discovered when yeah. they were just putting him on bigger targets and he was locking them down. It was great. We started moving around the field, start hitting him with head fakes and stuff like that. He, he's a different player. Yes. Um, so I'm not a big I'm not the biggest fan of his. Um, I would rather see the Eagles get Troy Hill because I think Troy Hill is one of the better nickels in this league. Now, where does that leave us with Craven LeBlanc and Nicole Roby Coleman? You're getting it getting a, a, a player that's you're upgrading. He can he can run with the best. He gets the ball back. But if you like, I think the Eagles will win the offseason if they got Hooker and Troy Hill. You Absolutely. automatically, you automatically upgrade your safety and your cornerback position, your DB position to a top 10 um, defensive backfield in the National Football League with those two guys. And, um, you know, that's what those are the types of moves that I think that help the team. It's not the splashy because we, when we think about free agency, we want to see where the offensive player is going or like the defensive end is going. We don't hear about the safety or no, or the nickel corner. Like those are the positions that will get you some W's because the nickel position, if you haven't watched the NFL, everybody plays with tight ends in the middle of the field, they're trying to avoid the Patrick Petersons. They're trying to avoid the Darius Slays. They're going to make the linebackers who like to hit cover people. They're going to make the slot receiver who's super quick um, the the number one target because of the Patriots and because of um, Coach Reed and his system. So you need premier players in the middle of your field. So if you can get a linebacker and cover some nickel and a safety they can cover, man, you 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 you're winning. Yeah. And um, so I would love to see that happen, Q. On the other end, you got your receivers that are still out there. You got Kenny Galladay. Um, I was going to say Kendrick Bourne, but he got picked up by the Patriots. Yeah. Um, you got Antonio Brown that's still there. You got Juju Smith-Schuster that's still there. Will Fuller, um, is, he, is he still? Will Fuller still available. Um, so if the Eagles were thinking about receivers, I think they should pass this year. Um, I did a really deep study. Um, on most of the receivers um, in the National Football League when I was with the Eagles this year. And one of my targets was, um, for sure, was um, Kenny Galladay. And I like his physicality, but he's a high-volume guy to me, meaning receivers that are good are efficient. So if you throw them 100 passes in a season, they're going to come down with 70, 75, 80. You throw Galladay 100 passes, he's probably going to come down with 60. 55 that's not good that doesn't equate to winning right so um it's just like a it's just like shooting percentage that's why you can't talk to me about Kobe Bryant or um you know somebody else and I love Kobe as a you know as a player but he would never be as great as Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan's a career 50 percent shooter from shooting guard position Kobe's never been over a 47 percent so those types of things and it's the same way when it comes to receiver it's about who's efficient your catch numbers um and, and that equates to victories uh, michael michael thompson um uh, michael thompson um what's the kid and um uh michael thomas um julio jones those guys calvin johnson they have high catch percentage and those are the guys you want larry fitzgerald high catch percentages that, that equates to wins um yes. so the guy that i would go for if i'm going to go any um is i would pass on receivers because Sammy Watkins getting hurt. Antonio Brown's old. Kenny Galladay's fool's gold. Juju Smith's Schuster's fool's gold. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Not this year. Yeah. Hey, listen. I I trust you on that. I I personally depends and see, and a lot of this depends on, to, in, my, in my opinion, what's the cost. I wouldn't mind, you know, Will Fuller, just just as a take the top off type of player. Yeah. screen guy like I, I don't see him you know being a true true number one um but I do see him helping out in the screen game I see him helping out and you know taking the top off I do see him you know if you, you pair him up on the same side in the flop set which I'm not sure if they're gonna run the same type of offense but you're putting him on the same side with Jalen double post routes where you now the safety has to you have to pick one right you got yeah. Jalen running across your 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 eyes you cross your eyes and then you got Will Fuller running a sting, I call it a sting route, post corner post, post corner behind holes, you. Yeah. So I can I can see him in the big playability 
And if anything else, if for nothing else, to open up and free up that's what those spots guys for the underneath guys. Yeah, because yeah, you, know you, I mean? you know what it's like at being a DB, that, that guy that can run, you spend more time with the guy that can run on, on going on defensive calls than the guy that caught, you know, 12 passes last game. It's like, no, the guy that caught 12 passes can't beat you. The guy that can run will beat yes. you every time. Every <laughs> That's time. just how you think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and then, and, and when you, when you're in a game and this is not a fun position, you know, you know exactly what the defense is, or the offense is trying to do. Like, I know William Fuller's out there. He's going to run across my hip. Like, I know that. Yeah. I know I have to respect that. And that's one of the hardest things to play when you got someone with so much speed is to play discipline. And the second that you make a mistake, you got to have somebody that's going to be there to make a play and make you pay, make the teams pay for it. So I'm okay with, if at the right number, I'm okay with a player like William Fuller. Um, I can see that. I can see that happening. Yeah. I can see that happen. I, you know, I, you know, and and I can see that happening for the Eagles because they like they like a bunch of guys with the same type of skill sets. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we'll we'll see how <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, and uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. But that's going to wrap up our show this week. And um, you guys check us out. We drop Wednesday morning at six a.m. inside the Birds platform, YouTube, Facebook. Um, we thank um, Jeff and Adam and everyone that's responsible for putting this show together. Hunter, that's that's cutting up the um, the the show and the, the clips, the edits um, to the fans. Thank you for giving us a, an opportunity to to speak with you about football. We love this game. We love the Eagles, and um, Q and A um, is here to stay, baby. And my yes, man, Quinn Michael is the man, <laughs> the Pro Bowler, the man, the myth, the legend. It's a pleasure to do this show with you, my man. Absolutely. I love it, man. Great, great talking to you as always. You listen, you break down a lot of stuff for me that um, I'm learning from oh, your point learn, of view. So it's we awesome, learn man. Together, man. We <laughs> learn together. This is about we trying to teach people about some football. Yes, sir. It's fun stuff. <laughs> All right. So we'll check into you guys next week. And um, hopefully the Eagles can get some free agents, some people that can add value to the team. And hey. <laughs>